Okay, so I've had a few requests uh, to share my stacking and uh, processing techniques. Um, I'm not going to call this a tutorial. I'm just going to show you what I do. And if it works for you, great. And if it doesn't, keep playing around with it until you find something that does. Uh, I'm using Artist Stacker 3. Uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, open your video. So go ahead and open your video. Um, now, I shot this with a uh, Celestron um, Evolution mount, which is an Altaz mount. Um, you can play the video right here. It's, uh, it was done with a 9.25 inch uh, SCT. And um, it, uh, it was shot in raw format, which is like a black and white um, type format with the uh, the color it was uh, not not in the video uh, auto stacker will uh, debayer that black and white video to put the color information back in it uh, auto stacker has a great uh, algorithm for that uh, some people use pip I'm not a big fan of pip uh, I think auto stacker does a much better job if um, if you're using a non-tracking um, mount like a Dobsonian or something like that and you get clipping of the planet where the planet drifts off the chip uh, PIP becomes useful for that for getting rid of those frames because you don't want them in your stack um, or if you're using uh, like a cell phone video or a video from a DSLR that does not take video in um, either AVI or SER in raw format, then PIP is okay to use for changing that type of format into uh, AVI or SER. But other than that, uh, I just don't see a whole lot of use for it, and I, I don't use it in my, you know, in my uh, routine. Uh, also, this was a two and a half minute AVI that I took. Uh, auto stack its alignment points are fantastic. They can handle that planet rotation in two and a half minutes. Uh, you don't need one Jupos. I don't use that either. Um, so, you know, pretty much I just use uh, auto stacker and I use uh, Registax for the sharpening of wavelets. And sometimes I'll use one other program to give a little bit of saturation to the videos, uh, to the to the picture, uh, just to make the colors a little bit more vibrant. So, anyway, that's what my video looks like. Um, what I uh, let's the first thing that you want to do is. Uh, Hit analyze and auto stack it will analyze your video. Um, we're looking at a planet, so we're going to use planet here. Uh, I've got dynamic background checked. Your noise robust is for how good your scene conditions were. Now, I think a lot of people overestimate how good their scene is. Um, I use six pretty much all the time. Now, if uh, if seeing was absolutely phenomenal, then I would use a lower number. Or if seeing's worse, I would use a higher number. Or just leave it at six. Uh, if your video didn't look as good as mine, I highly suggest you do not use anything lower than six. Uh, I just think it's uh, not helping you. Um, I wanted to look at the alignment points and not the picture as a whole. Uh, I use uh, quality based. Uh, I've tried double stack and that doesn't work for me. Um, I've not had any success with it. Uh, I want it to stack me in a TIFF, not a PNG or a FIT. And I'm using, I'm going to go ahead and use 30% of my frames in the stack. Now, I have a total of 44,909 frames in this two and a half minute AVI, and it's going to pick 
30% of the best frames to put in the stack. I like to normalize my stack at 75%. Uh, I use RGB Align, but it probably doesn't do anything because I use an ADC when I'm recording. So uh, the color channels are most likely aligned through that AD ADC during the recording. But I go ahead and have Auto Stacker take a look at it anyway. And if it doesn't have to do anything, it won't anyway. Uh, it saves in the folders that the ABI came from. Uh, drizzle, uh, some people use drizzle, uh, one and a half can uh, make your picture one and a half times larger than your recording or three times larger or even two times larger. I'm going to leave that off for now. Uh, so now that it's analyzed it, uh, it gives you this little quality graph that um, it, it thinks you're... Uh, you know the the quality of each frames the the best to the to the worst and then um, f this here is your alignment point size uh, typically what I like to do is I like to let auto stacker um, set its own alignment points it knows where it needs them better than I do uh, one thing that I do use is multi scale and what multi-scale will do is it'll use different size alignment points all inside the planet so that it can track better using the different size alignment points. Do not use close to edge when you're using uh, when you're doing Jupiter. Um, you don't want those alignment point boxes way out here in the black because uh, the alignment point will try to track this black and uh, get confused or lost and sometimes it will mess up your edge of your planet. When you, uh, when you do want to use that close to edge is when you, you're stacking Saturn and the rings are way out here in the black, you want to make sure that your alignment points are on those rings so it can track those rings. Uh, so go ahead and hit place AP grid and you'll see it came up with 257 alignment points. Now for a picture this size, um, I think that's too much. Uh, it's just too many alignment points. You can get artifacts on your picture if you use too many and you won't get enough detail if you use too few. Uh, so let's clear that. And with a picture this size, I typically I like to get between, you know, say 70 or 80, maybe 90 alignment points. So let's see here. Let's try, let's try 56 for size. Let's see here. 83. Okay, 83 is not bad. Uh, the only thing, other thing I like to do is uh, if you have moons, let's clear this. If you have, like, right here is a moon and here is a shadow or if you have moons out here what I would like to do is take like maybe a small alignment point and click it on the moon or click it on the shadow or both and if I had some moons out here say Ganymede or Io uh, I would click a small alignment box on those moons and another thing I like to do is always make sure that I have an alignment box directly on the uh, great red spot. That's a great feature to track uh, by itself and um, let Auto Stacker do its thing on that. So uh, after you're done here, um, just go ahead and hit stack and let it do its job. Now this uh, this video was shot in 640 by 480 uh, ROI and uh, was getting about 250 between 250 and 300 frames per second on this um, shot through fire capture and uh, like I said I use a uh, Celestron Evolution Altaz mount with a uh, um, 9.25 inch SCT. I also use a uh, 
2x vocal extender from uh, Explore Scientific. I use the um, ZWO80C, uh, which is an atmospheric distortion corrector. I use an IR cut filter from ZWO, and I also um, use the ASI 224MC camera. Uh, wonderful camera. Uh, very happy with it. Uh, the quality and speed of that camera is fantastic. And uh, I highly recommend it for planetary imaging. Now, this is going to uh, take a little while to um, do its thing. And uh, so let's go ahead and pause this video while we're waiting for it. And then we'll come back to it. Okay, we're back. Auto Stackard's done its thing. Uh, this right here will tell you how long it took to do each thing that it was doing, making the stack. And uh, like I said, it's going to save it in the folder uh, where the video came from. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this is Auto Stackard. This is the folder. This is the video that we're using. So here is your stack. And it doesn't look like much right now, but uh, we use programs like Registax uh, for uh, wavelets and sharpening and a few other things to turn that into this picture. So um, that will be the next video when I'll show you a couple of different ways to use Registax to... Uh, Try to turn your stack into something like this. So that's it for this tutorial.